Hey everyone, we are continuing to work on our two syllable word. So our word of the day is disrupt. Disrupt, that's a two syllable word. Let's see how we figured that out. Now, one of the things that we wanna do is make sure that we're looking at our vowels. I'm gonna go first. A-E-I-O-U, those are our vowels. Can you sing it with me? A-E-I-O-U, one more time. A-E-I-O-U. Awesome job. Now, it's really important that we learn how to mark up unfamiliar words, words that we don't know. It's really important because no matter where you go, you're going to have to learn how to read. You have to read at the supermarket when you're trying to find a certain grocery. You have to read maybe when you're trying to drive to the beach. You have to know what sign tells you where to go. You have to know how to read no matter where you are. So it's really helpful that we train our brains to read words that we don't know. Now, what I'd like to talk about here is this word disrupt. The first thing that I'm going to do is look for a vowel. Do you see any vowels? See, I see two. That's our hint that it's a two-syllable word. We have the vowel I and we have the vowel U. Now, those two little marks that I just drew help us know that the vowel is soft. I says I and U says a. Uh. That's a soft sound. A hard sound would be if the vowel says its name. I, you, that's a hard sound. We want the soft sound. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do is see if there are two consonants side by side. Do we see two consonants side by side? I do. I see F and R. I'm going to draw a little line right here. Those are two consonants side by side. And we know that we can split our words like this. It's really important that we don't split between the P and the T. Because if I split here, the T is going to be all by itself. We need to make sure that when we split into two syllables, or any syllable, that there's always a vowel in it. Okay? So in this syllable, the first one, the I, is the vowel. In the second syllable, the U is the vowel. So let's go ahead and tap it. We would tap D. It's dis. We would tap the next one. R -a -t -r -a -t -r -a -t Disrupt. Now I'd like to clap. Disrupt. Disrupt. Now to disrupt someone or something is to kind of like interject, to kind of get in the middle of it, maybe stop it, maybe make a mess of it. So here's an example. If I was teaching in the front of the room and something fell and made a loud boom, that sound, whatever fell, could disrupt my teaching. It could stop my teaching from happening. Um, another example could be if you're playing a video game and a brother or sister or anyone came in and said, hey, what you doing? That could disrupt your video game, right? So we can disrupt plenty of different things. You could even disrupt an adult for a good thing, like the stove is on, right? Even though the stove isn't supposed to be on, right? That'd be a really good reason to disrupt something or someone. Okay, now the next thing that I want to talk about is that sometimes a two-syllable word can also have a suffix ending. So. Let's look here. I could say that my sister is disrupting, is disrupting my sleep. She came in the room and said, hey, what are you doing later today? She was disrupting me. Oh my goodness, how terrible of her. Another thing that we could do is I could say that yesterday, my dog disrupted my sleep. Oh, in the past, something can be disrupted, right? I'm not having a lot of luck with sleeping, huh? Disrupted. So I could have disrupting, disrupted. We can also have suffix endings like E-R, E-S-T, right? We can also have suffix endings like S and E-S. So we're going to look at a story together. And this story is going to have two-syllable words and two-syllable words with suffix endings. And one-syllable words with suffix endings. So let's check out this story. Okay, so this story is called Hopscotch. Now think for a second. What do you know about Hopscotch? Now, I know that Hopscotch is a game that I could play. I could play this game outside. Um, what else do I know about this game? I know that you have to like toss a stone or a stick into boxes, and then I know that you have to hop in the boxes. I wonder if my story has to do with hopping in boxes like a game. 
maybe. It's really important. Before you even start reading, look at the title. And the title can give you a hint about what the story is going to be about. I wonder if this story is going to talk about boxes, jumping, maybe a fun game. Let's see. The other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to help train my brain and see where are the two syllable words and where are the suffix endings. So here's what I did. I took a highlighter and highlighted all of the two syllable words and circled all the suffix endings. Oh, oh my goodness. This is going to be really helpful. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you my best reading. I've already given this two practice readings. I slowed down, I read in my head, I tapped and clapped, and all, all the strategies that I needed, I've already done and practiced this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my best reading first, and what you guys are going to do eventually is read this story again on your own and give it your first read and your second read and slow it down and try it on your own. So I'm going to read this story, and we're going to stop and think think about what's happening. Okay, so let's see. Now, I have to look here, so that way I can see um, the story. So you're going to see me look here and look at you, and it's all going to work out a-okay. All right, so this story is Hopscotch, and I already have some background knowledge that's going to help me with this story. So let's see. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It says, Hopscotch is lots of fun. It was invented a long, long time ago. It was not a fun game at that time. It was used to make the men in the British Army stronger. There were lots of boxes in the, hopsco uh, in the hopscotches. The hopscotch could be hundreds of feet long. The men had to hop in all the boxes with their splendid armor on. The strongest and fastest men finished first. The men who did not finish got upset. They knew they would be punished. What happened in that first paragraph? Hmm. I just learned, I never knew this before, that hopscotch was something that was used to train British soldiers, people in the British Army. Whoa! That is so cool. There's also something that I read in here. It said splendid armor. It said that they had, the men had to hop in all the boxes with their splendid armor. I might not know what the word splendid means, but I know that this sentence still makes sense. It means that the men had to wear their armor and do all the hopscotches. Hmm, that's very interesting. Now, splendid could mean a good thing. It was awesome armor, amazing armor. That's what splendid means. But it's also okay if maybe you thought, hmm, heavy armor. Hmm, not too sure. It's always good to slow down and think about what could this sentence mean. Splendid means like amazing, wonderful. Okay. Hmm. And I also know that if you were the fastest and the strongest, you finish first. And maybe if you were the weakest or slowest, you finish last. And they would get in trouble. Wow. I had to stop and think talk about all the things that I just learned. Let's read the next paragraph. The next paragraph says, the British children wanted to mimic the men in the army. They made their own hopscotches. Huh. Let's think. The British children wanted to mimic the men in the army. They made their own hopscotches. I wonder what the word mimic means. The British children wanted to blank the men in the army. They made their own hopscotches. Well, I almost think if they made their own hopscotches, they were copying the British Army guys. So maybe mimic means to copy. Yeah, that's what it means. Mimic means to copy. Wow, I read the sentence and I thought about what that word might mean. So the British children wanted to copy, wanted to mimic the men in the Army and made their own. Interesting. Let's look at the next sentence. Theirs were not as long as the ones the men made. They tossed small rocks onto the boxes and hopped to the end. When the children played, it was all for fun. Even now, there are children who think that hopscotch is a blast. I just read that this was a game that kids created to copy soldiers, and it was all just for fun. Oh, 
Oh, that's awesome. What I want you to do right now is stop and think. Replay the story in your head. Think about it from the beginning to the end. And I'm going to stop and I'm going to think with you, okay? Let's stop and think. I'm going to think what happened first, next, and last. First, first, men in the British Army use hot scotch to train. Made them stronger. That's something I learned. Next, the British children mimicked or copied the British soldiers and made their own game. And last, the kids used small rocks and tossed them into boxes and played a fun game. That is so cool. Now, anytime you play hopscotch, you're going to know where it all started. Amazing. So this is just an example of how you guys can read on your own, slow it down, read the story, and stop and think. And just how we learn the word splendid and mimic, you can learn any other new word too. All right, guys, you did a fantastic job. I'm so proud of all of you. All right, I'll see you soon. Give it a practice.